All right, in this video, we want to take a look at factoring binomials. Remember that a binomial is a polynomial that has two terms. Now, these are the basic forms that we have here for factoring binomials. This first guy is one of the best guys ever. It's the difference of squares. The difference of two squares would factor as a plus b times a minus b. a squared plus b squared doesn't factor using real numbers. Later on, we'll find out how this does factor. We see that it involves imaginary numbers, complex numbers. And these are the forms for the sum of the difference of cubes. And there will be another video later on for you to watch to, to show how we factor with the sum of the difference of cubes. Right now, this is the guy we want to highlight. Factoring the difference of squares. One of the funnest guys ever. Yeah, I know I said funnest. What are you going to do? Stop watching the video? Well, it's up to you. Here's what we need to be able to see. If I have something like x squared minus 25, I need to be able to see, is this a difference of two squares? Now, sometimes it's easy for us to see that this guy is x squared minus 5 squared. And if that's the case, then we can identify this as being our a and our b, the guys that are on the inside. So when I factor this, I know what form that's going to take. This is going to take the form of a plus b times a minus b. And if we know that, that just means going x plus 5 times x minus 5. And you just factor the difference of squares. In a previous chapter, we learned how to multiply and see that the result was the difference of squares. Because if you check this out, plus 5x on the inside, minus 5x on the outside becomes 0. So that's why you don't have an x term right here. It becomes 0. Well, let's try another one. Suppose we have x squared minus 49. The key is being able to recognize that you do have two squares. X, is the, x squared is the square of x. 49 is the square of 7. So the x squared breaks out as x and x. The 49 is the square of 7 plus, minus, and you're done. Wow, these guys are fun. As long as I know my squares, I'm going to be OK. Well, and that's where you would be right. As long as you know your squares, you can't really go wrong with these guys. Well, what if I change it up a little bit and I say 4x squared minus 9? We know that 9 is a square, but what about this guy? Well, 4 is a square and so is x squared. In fact, 4x squared is the square of 2x. So 2x times 2x. 9 is the square of 3, so 3 and 3. 1 plus. 1 minus, just like the formula says, and you are done. Well, it doesn't seem to be too bad. I mean, how could things get worse? I'm so glad you asked that. Because, see, a lot of times students get scared when they see fractions. Well, here's something you need to know. This is a difference, so we can look at doing a difference of squares. This guy is a square, obviously, x squared. What about this fraction? If I had just this guy right here, 121 is a square. But what about the 64? He's a square as well. So when I factor this, I'm going to take that into account. x squared becomes x and x. 121 becomes 11 and 11. The 64 is the denominator, so over 8 and over 8. 1 plus and 1 minus. And there is our factorization. Well, those really aren't too bad. Well, let's see a few more crazy examples because they're only going to get better. x to the 10th minus 16. Well, 16 is obviously a square, but x to the 10th guy seems kind of weird, but he is a square. Uh, let's do this. 
can you see this as something squared minus something else squared? Well, 16, of course, is going to be 4 squared. That guy's easy. But x to the 10th, you've got to know your properties of exponents. If I have x to the 5th in here, a power to a power means I would multiply those, and I get my 10. So yeah, this guy's a square. So you see that he's going to factor as x to the 5th plus 4 and x to the 5th minus 4. Just what we would expect. All right, well, let's make things even more exciting. How about we try this? 49x to the 4th minus 81y to the 12th. Well, we see that 49 and 81 are both squares. And to see if the variable components are squares, you just have to make sure their exponents are even. And they are. So if I try to break these guys down evenly, so to speak, in terms of their factors, 49 breaks down as 7 and 7. And that's going to be x squared for both of them. 81y to the 12th will be 9 and 9. And that 12 is going to break down as 6 and 6. So y to the 6th and y to the 6th. And then we remember, we've got plus and minus. And that guy's done. Let's see if we can get two more examples in here. If we try 100x to the 7th minus 25, x to the 3rd, y to the 4th. Now, before you start going off and saying, okay, well, 100 and 25 are both squares, that's true. But remember, the first thing we do with factoring is to look for the greatest common factor. 125 have a common factor of 25. And you see they both contain factors of x. And the most amount of x I can pull out is going to be x to the third. When I factor that out, what's left? 100 divided by the 25 is 4. How many x's do I have? I had 7, I took out 3, I have 4. And then I had negative 25 divided by 25 is a negative 1. I had x to the third, but I took all those out. Well, sorry, back that up. I had x to the third, I took all of those out, and I'm left with y to the fourth. Now when you look at what's inside here, this guy is the difference of squares. So my common factor is still here. And this guy would break down as 2x squared plus y squared and 2x squared minus y squared. So always look for that GCF. Always. And let's do one last problem. For this one, I want to look at having x to the fourth minus 81. We've seen a lot of examples here with the exponents and with the squares. And so I hope you guys see that this guy would break down as x squared plus 9 and x squared minus 9. OK? But wait, before you put that box on there, look at this. x squared plus 9. That's the sum of squares, and he won't factor. But this is a difference of squares. So x squared plus 9, it's still there. And then this guy right here breaks down as x plus 3 times x minus 3. We could only break this guy down further because each piece was a square, and we had a difference. The sum of squares, you bring him down. He doesn't change. If the difference of squares showing up again means there's more work to be done. So always look for that.